The Fantastic Beast is found within like the first few minutes of this film. So from the start, I had no idea what this movie was about. And pretty much like Grindelwald wants to win this popularity contest by using a magical like shine gun sheep. It's confusing. The last movie was let's just say not the best, and the first one is like, it's fine, it's a fun time, I guess. And at the end of the day, I'd say I enjoyed this one. I feel like this movie isn't swinging for a home run, rather it's like, let's just get on base. Starting off with what I liked, this movie is Harry Potter's parents and Mads Mikkelsen is Voldemort because he absolutely kills it. He plays the role with the same calmness that makes his Hannibal so special, but he also taps into a dark and rageful side every once in a while. My man Jacob is the star of this franchise, as always, but like that's no surprise. And here he is great, but on top of that, this movie I think made the romance between him and Queenie feel the most interesting to me, since you know Queenie's like with the bad guys now. There's also some wizard fighting towards the end of the film I really enjoyed. It's way better than like the point and, and squint really hard combat that Harry Potter loves so much. Instead, you got some people using spells in creative ways, and I like how you can see different fighting styles among wizards. He doesn't fight a whole lot but Dumbledore has a unique style of fighting that really shows how powerful he is. Speaking of the title character, again, I thought Jude Law was great as Dumbledore. He feels very much like the character, but still a version who has a lot to learn before he's the same guy we see in Harry Potter. His brother, like, like, Abercrombie or something like that, he's also in the movie, and he has some cool moments, but I feel like with just Newt and Jacob and all these, like, politicians, he doesn't get enough screen time. That brings me to one of my complaints with the movie, and that's some of the characters. You have Dumbledore, Newt, Jacob, Grindelwald, and uh, yeah, that's about it for the characters who I can confidently say I enjoy. And then you have this gray area of like Newt's brother and, and this dude whose name I still don't know. And they aren't bad characters, but I feel like since they've never been given attention, I'm not really connected to them. And the story expects me to like them way more than I do. So then when we watch this guy fumble around silently for the whole movie, I'm like, okay guys, like, l let's move on. I did think this one chick, Hicks, was a pretty solid new character, and I hope to see her more in the next movies. However, this movie also runs into one of the biggest issues I had with the last movie, and that's, what the heck do we do with Newt? At, at least for, like, the first half of the movie. These are Dumbledore movies now, like, like, they aren't Newt movies, but since Fantastic Beasts is the title, we still gotta have Newt. For the first, like, hour, e even maybe more of that, Newt is sent on just this side quest where he can just go and do his thing with the animals, and it just feels so disconnected to the main Dumbledore story. Giving the film credit, though, okay, he's way more involved in the second half, and the way they interweave his talent with animals into the Dumbledore arc, I think it's done better here than anything else we've gotten in this franchise. It by far feels the most natural. In fact, I'd say the whole third act in this movie is really good, as everything just seems to click for the franchise finally. You got good Dumbledore and Grindelwald scenes, you got Newt, he doesn't feel out of place, the magic is good. I really enjoyed this part, except for the fact that Credence is, he, he's done pretty dirty. Overall though, I like the movie. It's a decent time, just don't expect too much. I'm gonna give this movie whatever is in between a C plus and a B minus. I'm still not sure what Dumbledore's secret was, 